Folks, I'm going to do a little tutorial today. I've done this same sort of tutorial before, but I doubt, doubt if anybody watched it much because back then when I did this tutorial, I had no subscribers, so it's a very old one that I have. But I'm going to kind of do an update on it. Let's say you've had to go, ever had to go out and shoot in a, a place where you did not have a good background, a good backdrop. Like say you had to shoot some portraits at a church or something. This is one of my friends, Brian Cox, who's an awesome doctor, and I hope he doesn't mind me using his image here. Uh, but this is, uh, I shot these photos of Dr. Cox back in his office a long time ago, probably 2005. I was looking down here to see where, 2006, look, I shot him in August 2006. And so here's this picture. I only had one light, as I recall. I had a light with me, uh, sort of like an old shop light thing that I put up there. And I put this pinned to the wall, sort of fold out or expandable green screen back behind him. I shot his staff. So... Uh, it turns out we need a nice portrait of Dr. Cox now. One of the old ones we had just doesn't look good at all, and this is a much better shot of him. So <clears throat> how do I do this? Now, I do a little trick. I could pull this into Photoshop, and I could try to get out the green and stuff, and there are some filters you could use. But if you have the creative cloud uh, for Photoshop, this is what I like to do. This is a background I've, I, I've had for a long time. Um, and I've got Dr. Cox here. I see, I think maybe I've got him here too. Yeah, so here he is green screen. I pulled him in from that image and I cropped it. And so you see you got the green screen here. Now, even in Photoshop, I have never had 100% good luck of getting all these pixels out this green, particularly around hair like this. There'll be a little bitty green transients and stuff in it. So what I do, I open up Premiere Pro. So I have Premiere Pro here. And look what I've done. I pulled my background in. If I turn Dr. Cox off here, you'll see. Here's the background. I can zoom in on this and you can see that here's the, is, is the, you can see it here on the screen that I pulled in. I pulled it in as a PSD. It could be a, a um, it's 2000 by 3200 pixels, but it could be a JPEG. If you want it to be a JPEG, just pull in any kind of image that would work. Uh, Dr. Cox, I pulled him in as a PSD just to kind of keep the highest integrity. It was shot as a JPEG though, so a JPEG would work as well. So what I did, I pulled Dr. Cox, I pulled the background in on this layer. Then I pulled Dr. Cox in on this layer on top of it, right? All I have to do is just drag the uh, image down like that and go on top of, uh, of whatever there. And so there I have Dr. Cox again. I'm going to turn this one off or delete this one. Since I already have this one, see the eyeball? You just turn the eyeball off and there he is. So what did I do? Well, first of all, I did a couple things. First, I wanted to blur that background a little bit just to give it the uh, sensation that it's a little bit farther back behind him. So I, I, I typed in blur over here under effects. You see where you have effects? Now, if you've not got the same layout that I do, you go up under window, go to workspace, and I like the old school editing CS 5.5 layout. Um, you could go with any of the other ones too, but this is a pretty good one for me. It's kind of what I'm used to from years and years of using Premiere. So that's how you get this arrangement here that you see that I've done. And um, so, so here's what, Here's what I did. I just pulled Gaussian Blur. I typed in Blur and Gaussian Blur, among with a, along with a bunch of other blurs, comes up. And I pulled the Gaussian Blur uh, over onto and drop it on right this right here, just, just like that. Just pull it and drag it onto that. Then up here at the top, you got what, you're, what you call your source clips and stuff. I go to Effects Control. If I go here, it's not going to show me a source because there's no video in there. But I go to Effects and I click on that, you'll see where the Gaussian Blur was, and I put up about an 11 pixel Gaussian Blur on that. Then I went to Dr. Cox's image here, and of course it's on there now, and I went and did Ultra, right? U-L-T-R-A. What that brings up is the Ultra Key, which is an awesome keying program. One of the best, I think. It used to come with a, uh, <clears throat> a program called Ultra that Adobe bought, and I often think I might be responsible for Adobe buying Ultra. It used to be a really great... Uh, program that was a software, a, like a chroma key type program that really did what they called vector uh, uh, keying. And I remember I was at a HAL conference back in 2006 or 2007, somewhere along in there, and I remember standing talking to an Adobe rep and telling him that the best key in the world that I've ever seen is Ultra Key. And within about a year and a half, they had bought the Ultra company. He goes, really? Who's Ultra? I remember showing him, it was in Vegas at a HAL conference. So, so funny, I may have... Uh, been responsible for Adobe discovering Ultra. At any rate, what I did here, if you see that I click on Dr. Cox's layer, you'll see I pulled the Ultra thing 
and I put it on top of this. You just drag it from here to there. And then you have to open up your effects control up here again to make sure this, this key up here is clicked on. And then you'll be able to see and it will pull open. It will come open. And you it will usually come with black. This will be all black here. And you've got to select your key color. So let me just let me just turn it off for a second. And you already see what I can do. I can just go here and click black. And you can see now there. Now you see you got your green, right? But I'm going to click the little eyedropper. And I'm going to go here close to his hair. I'm going to click a green. And there you go. Presto. Isn't that awesome? Now that's not always all that it takes. What I did too, I messed around with pedestal a little bit here. Pedestal, in most cases, will fix your problems. Look here. If I go back with a pedestal, you can see that some of it comes back in. It kind of ghosts in. But I usually just pull it over here to the right till it all goes away. All those little pixels, those little gray pixels. See it? It comes back. And there you go. Now, the, the thing is, you got to make sure your subject, of course, is not wearing green, right? Make sure your subject is always wearing something that is not green. You can also use a blue screen if they want to wear a green shirt. Let's say that they're that's somebody you're shooting and they've won the Masters and they got to wear a green jacket. Well, then shoot them against a blue, a one of those really crazy blue backgrounds. And that little backdrop that I have that has this green on it also has blue on the back side. So there you go. That's how I do it, folks. And then what? How do you? So how do you get this image out? Well, I go over here to the little photo thing, right? And, and I make sure I'm clicked on this window so that it's so that it's selecting the frame that I've got here. I click on this. Now you could choose JPEG. I'm here to tell you it doesn't. For some reason, Premiere does not output a real good JPEG. The best thing to choose is TIFF or Bitmap. I just use Bitmap usually. So I did a BMP. I said. Uh, I, I gave it a name, Dr. Cox, or whatever, and then I did a save, okay. And so then I was able to open it up, that up in Photoshop, and I'll show you basically how I did that. I'll go here and file open, and it's on my desktop here somewhere. So here's the Dr. Cox I just put out. Let's pull that open, and there you go. That's the frame. Now, it should be said that I did use a 2.7K or a 3K frame from Premiere because this is pretty big image size if you look here the sequence that I set up was uh, 1728 tall so if you ask what the how did I do that well I went when I did my sequence that I pulled this in this is the sequence down here this whole thing is a sequence what I did I did up here I said file new sequence and then I went to red RD3 under the settings usually you've got I've got AVC HD that I use but I went under red went to the 3K and I picked this one right here. And as you can see, it's 3072 by 1728. So I got a good high res image. I must say cancel on that. Go back to Photoshop. And then all in the world I had to do was just crop. Now it's taken me a long time to explain how I did this, but this whole process takes about a minute, minute and a half. Once you know what you're doing, if you want to shoot images of people and create portraits and put nice fancy backgrounds behind them and everything, even when they've got it's so a crazy spiky hair. I mean, I have crazy spiky hair myself, but you can see that turned out pretty decent. You wouldn't know that he wasn't in front of a, uh, a blue background that's kind of nested back behind him. Folks, I hope that has been very clear. Uh, give me any questions if I was unclear on anything. I hope this helps somebody that might be out there trying to do uh, por 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 portrait photography, and maybe you don't have a budget for big fancy lights and fancy backgrounds you can just go get an electronic one and throw it in there behind your subjects and use premiere pro if you are an adobe uh, creative cloud subscriber peace cheers